Okay, um, this will probably be the first video of EOS specific code in the course. Um, while I was in the process of making this course, I was like constantly on the Telegram, seeing you know what kinds of questions were de were new developers onboarding onto the platform having, and it seemed like this N macro was coming up very frequently. And I, uh, I, I recorded all the C plus plus videos very early on and then I waited to see like what changes were going to stick around between versions of Dawn that I could actually put into the course and it seems like this N macro is sticking around uh, between every different version of Dawn so uh, I decided uh, to to kind of do a video on it. It is a little bit confusing. Um, anyway, here's an example. This is the DICE contract from the EOS um, repo and it uses this N macro quite a bit um, and in fact I think this multi-index that's scoped to the EOS IO namespace uh, require, may require this N macro at least it seems to be the best practice I've seen everybody writing code using this macro when defining different parameters to the uh, multi-index so this N macro is actually defined in the types.hpp which is found here uh, in the includes for EOS IO lib and all it is is this small macro. It's <laughs> amazing what a what a small macro can actually do for confusion. Um, so this n is defined as EOSIO string to name with this pound include x. And you can see here in the description, um, it creates a compile time uint64 from the base32 encoded string rep representation of x, which still kind of is a bit confusing if you really don't know what's going on here. But uh, I've noticed everywhere in the code they really like using these UN 64s I'm assuming that's for efficiency reasons and then also um, safety when you're doing comparisons and things like that so what I did is I just kind of toyed around with the the macro oh well, one thing I wanted to mention while we're over here in the code uh, this string to name is actually defined somewhere in this code as well right here so this is this is just C code. Like this, there's nothing special going on here that you know EOS is doing anything magical or anything like that. It's just literally passing this X and it's a macro defined n, and then it's passing this X into the string to name function. The string to name function does something. It uses this chart a symbol function, which is up here defined up here. So it's just a very basic algorithm. There's nothing crazy going on here. So what I did is I just pulled that code in here so I could kind of play around with the end macro and show you some things about it. Uh, here's the string to name function. It's copied verbatim from the EOS IO code. Here's the chart of symbol and then I've defined my own macros here just to kind of play around with the code. Um, so what I, what I did here is I, I created this um, C string, the C style string essentially. Um, test one two three one two three. And then I passed it into a bunch of different things in order to really like unpack what was going on here. Um, so let's let's just run one line of the code, and then uh, we'll slowly like uncommon each one of these, and I'll just kind of describe what's going on here. So uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm passing in this test string variable that has this defined as the actual string into the end macro, which is up here the end macro, right, and it's calling the string to name function with the pound sign x here and you might be a little bit surprised as to what actually gets printed out here oh uh, another thing I point, wanted to point out is in the string to name function I'm actually printing out what is being passed to the string to name function because this will help so in their algorithm they, they iterate through this um, array uh, to get the length of it and I'm actually just um, printing out each character in the array when while they're doing that in the um, function. So let's compile this and run it and see what happens. So again I'm, I'm, I'm printing out what's passed to the string to name function and then I'm also printing out what's returned from the end macro. So what's what's actually being passed to the string to name function is test string. It's not the actual value here that you would expect, right? You would expect this test123 to be passed to the string to name but it's not. Um, and then another thing that might be a little bit confusing is what's returned from the end macro is this big old long um, UN64. So what's happening is you're getting passed in a test string and then it's being 
convert it into a UN64 version of that and that's what's getting returned down here to the cout function and that's what we're seeing printed down here. So what this macro is doing is it's taking the actual variable name that's being passed into it and passing that to string to name. Not the actual value that's that's stored in the variable but the variable name itself in this case test string, right? And um, the, these little tests that I've ran down here are just kind of proving that out. Um, right here I'm, pass, I'm passing this test string directly into string to name and what you'll see printed out there is that the string to name isn't doing anything fancy, right? Like the conversion's actually happening in the macro. It's not happening inside string to name because as expected, you're getting passed test one, two, three, one, two, three, which is the value here at test string. That's getting passed in and as expected, printed out here as a standard function would, would work. And then again, it's uh, converting that to a uint and uh, returning that to us. So what I, what I, another thing I wanted to do while I was just messing around with it is I, I defined a, my own macro here and rather than doing the UN64 conversion, um, I just did a, a basic string conversion, no, no UN64 here, because I wanted to make sure that's exactly what was happening. So here I have this print string f uh, um, function and it's not returning a UN64 as in the string to name, it's just literally returning a string and that string is the str, right? No no, no crazy magic, nothing happening here. Um, so I pass that in to print string just to prove that it returns only a simple string. And then I use my macro to see like, you know, is it the macro that's actually doing the magic um, of taking the variable name instead? And in fact it is, see, if we, if we use the regular just uh, print string converter, the regular function that was doing nothing but creating the string, you'll see that it actually takes the value of the string, but then if we actually use the macro, you're seeing this variable name printed out. I did one more just to, just to prove like, you know, it, it doesn't even matter if there's anything defined in this string at all, and it really could probably be any uh, vari variable, val like any value, an int, a string, a char, char star, anything, it's still going to take that variable name and print that out. So here I'm using Jackson coin. And you'll see Jackson coins printed out even though there's nothing actually in there. Um, so that's the end macro, and kind of in a nutshell, a, a very brief, small toy example. Um, in the next video, we'll continue to kind of go through different uh, oddities of writing EOS smart contracts, different types of uh, syntax and unpack and show that, you know, there's nothing really crazy going on here. There's no crazy magic. See you in the next video.